Hi friends, it's Nathan, a second year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo. Welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. So I have exams every single week, Monday mornings, 9 a.m., two hour long in duration. And because of this, I had to figure out a system on how I could learn quickly and study even quicker. So without me even realizing, I developed a technique where I would catch up on all the lectures that I missed and all the content that I'm behind in in four days and then study in two days in time for my exam on Monday morning. And surprisingly, it's worked really well. So I'm going to share with you my six day study plan. This was not something that I really thought too much about it. It just kind of was born out of necessity. I had to adapt and this is what came out of it. So if you're in a similar situation where you procrastinated and you're falling behind or if your curriculum is just grueling like mine, then keep on watching. Like I mentioned, this is a six day catch up study plan. I'm gonna set the time frame as if we have an exam Monday morning, just cause it's easier to follow like that, but you can just shift it accordingly whenever your exam is. So from Tuesday to Friday, those are our four days to catch up and our weekends, uh, those two days are for us to study. Let's get started. Assuming you have an exam on Monday, your next free day is gonna be Tuesday. So that is your day one. And from day one to four or Tuesday to Friday, you are going to catch up and learn all the content that you missed. Depending on how far behind you are in class, it may take you four days, it may take you two days. The lesser the number of days, the better. However, you're giving yourself a maximum of four days to study. That is what you're capping it as, no more than that. And you may be thinking that I'm crazy, but it's definitely doable. I have studied one month of material in four days. So if I can do it, you can do it too. You just have to be really efficient and I'm gonna show you how to be efficient. You have to be prioritizing what you need to study. If you're running low on time, forget about the readings, the case studies, the extra videos you have to watch. Forget about all of that and just focus on the lecture notes because those are the main concepts. That is what the professor or teacher is gonna be asking you for majority of the questions on the exam. For a content-based course like biology or humanities, you're gonna be using flashcards, either Anki, Quizlet, or physical flashcards. I would discourage flashcards unless you're able to make them very quickly because they tend to take significantly more time than digital flashcards. I've learned from experience that flashcards are the most effective way to learn, especially on a time crunch. They're fast, they're effective, and essentially you're able to get through a lot of material in a very short amount of time. I use Anki, which is a free flashcard program that uses spaced repetition. We are gonna use it a little bit unconventionally because we don't have the luxury of time, but the technique still works great. A lot of you have been asking me how I make my Anki cards, what my process is like, because you guys see it in every single study vlog. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that video. But until then, um, I recommend checking out an Anki tutorial on Skillshare who has kindly sponsored today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes ranging from productivity, lifestyle, tech, creativity, and so much more. And from these classes, you can learn new skills, develop your passions, and try something creative. The class is called Learn Anything with Flashcards, The Ultimate Guide to Anki by Ali Abdel, who we all know and love. The class provides an extensive walkthrough of Anki and its features so that you can maximize active recall and space repetition. Anki can be challenging in the very beginning because it's a very unfamiliar program. The idea behind it is not very known. However, this tutorial gave me everything I need to know and it actually taught me how to use image occlusion. And image occlusion is what you see I use in every single study blog. It's where you cover up something and then you test yourself. And that is primarily how I'm able to make 70 flashcards in an hour and study all 70 flashcards effectively and fully in two hours. Definitely check out the class. Ali does an amazing job at explaining. As you can tell, Skillshare is designed for learning and they're constantly coming out with new premium classes. You'll be able to stay focused and run wild with whatever you're passionate about. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium so that you can take the Anki class and any other class that interests you. As you're reading through your lecture slides, you're gonna be making flashcards. Now, the key is that you're gonna be doing both simultaneously. So once you read a lecture slide, you're gonna make a flashcard for it and then keep doing it and keep doing it. And the reason for this is that reading through lecture slides can be very passive. However, if you're actively making flashcards on the content you just read, 
it's double exposure, hitting two birds with one stone. You're understanding it better. And essentially, not only are you learning the material, but you're also prepping to study. For a problem-based or essay-based course, it's a little bit different. So for something like math, you are going to read your lecture slides and only make notes if you don't have lecture slides available. For a subject like math, read your lecture slides, only take notes if you're not given lecture slides, and then do practice problems. For a subject like English, you are going to read your lecture slides and read summaries of your text online. Trust me, you're gonna be able to find them. There's no point of rereading your actual text because that's a waste of time. Just look for the summaries online. And you're gonna take notes on what is important for your exam. So don't take notes on plot because that should be common knowledge at this point. Uh, it's either you know it or you don't. Uh, and they're probably not gonna ask you specific things on the plot. Focus on themes, characters, quotes. These are the things that you will most likely be required to write an essay on in the exam and a bunch of other questions will probably ask on these so that is what you need to know not so much the plot by day four or friday you should be scheduled to finish learning all the content and catching up on everything by the end of the day if you're starting to panic and realize that there's no way you can do that then you're going to prioritize even more okay you are going to at this point just focus on the key, key, key critical things in your lecture slides and hope that you're able to make connections and infer on the knowledge that you haven't learned based on the knowledge that you have learned. There tends to be connections and relations to topics. So hopefully if you understand one content really well, you can kind of bridge off of that and craft a response for something else. That is what you gotta do at this point because you just gotta keep going, you gotta keep going. We reach the weekend. So for a content-based course, you are going to quiz yourself using those flashcards for the next two days. That is the sole thing you're gonna be doing for the next 48 hours. You're just gonna go through flashcards. With Anki, if you're studying a specific chapter and you're struggling with a card, you can actually choose to see that card again a little later on while you're studying the same set. And that's what I think is so effective about it. But essentially, if you don't use Anki and you're using Quizlet or Fiscal Flashcards, just make sure that you're noting down what you're unsure of and then going back to it again. It's really important that you are studying your sets very effectively and 100% because you're not going to go back to these sets. Once you've finished a chapter, once you've finished a set of flashcards, that's done and you're not going to revisit it. So make sure you're giving it your all when you're studying that chapter. For your problem-based course or essay-based courses, you're going to be doing past papers and making essay plans. Again, those are the sole things you'll be doing in the next 48 hours. The main idea of doing this is essentially anticipating questions. By doing enough physics problems, you're going to realize that they can only ask a kinematics question in so many ways. Or if you're studying Shakespeare, you know they're going to ask about themes. So make an essay plan on every single theme. I loved English and I've become a very strong writer. So let me know if you want a video on how to write a perfect essay because I have gotten hundreds in my essays. So if you want that, let me know in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of the six day catch up study plan where we caught up in four days and studied in two days all in time for our exam. I've been using this technique throughout the term and I've been doing well. So it's definitely something to try, especially if you have high turnaround exams or if you procrastinated and ended yourself up in this situation. You may feel a little unprepared leading up to the exam, especially in those last two days because you're going through so much content so quickly, but be confident in yourself. You have saturated your brain in the past six days with knowledge that you have learned, understood, memorized, practiced, and planned. And all these little things that we've been doing, making the flashcards while reading, the active recall, and making the essay plan, to doing practice problems, all these add up so that when you're in the exam, it'll all just come flooding back despite, I guess, cramming it. You have done everything in your power to prepare for this exam. So be confident walking into that room, show the examiner that you are that student. You know, they always say, you can't study for this in a week. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you have the right methods and you have the diligence and you have the motivation, yes, you can. So show them that you're able to catch up effectively, study efficiently, and ultimately ace the exam. 
If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like as well as for good luck. I will be manifesting A's for all of you. Let me know what exam you're studying for in the comments. And if you want to see more study tips and vlogs, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video, which is Tuesdays at 11 a.m. EDT. If you want to see more day-to-day -day content, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. But that's it for me, and I'll see you friends in the next video. Bye. You'll do great. Trust me. You will.